Sunday of Pentecost, the Mecca Union St. Mary's. In the epistle for this eighth Sunday of Pentecost, chapter 8. Brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you shall die. But if by the Spirit you mortify the deeds of the flesh, you shall live. For whosoever are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again in fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption of sons, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself gives testimony to our spirit that we are the sons of God, and if sons, heirs also, heirs indeed of God, and joint heirs with Christ. In the Gospel, we got according to St. Luke, chapter 16. At the time Jesus spoke to his disciples in this parable, there was a certain rich man who had a steward, and the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. And he called him and said to him, How is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship, for now thou canst be steward no longer. And the steward said within himself, What shall I do, because my Lord taketh away from me the stewardship? To dig I am not able, to beg I am ashamed. I know what I will do, that when I shall be removed from the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. Therefore, calling together every one of his Lord's debtors, he said to the first, How much dost thou owe my Lord? But he said, A hundred barrels of oil. And he said to him, Take thy bill, and sit down quickly, and write fifty. And he said to another, And how much dost thou owe? Who said, A hundred quarters of wheat. He said to him, Take thy bill, and write eighty. And the Lord commended the unjust steward, for as much as he had done wisely. For the children of this world are wiser in their generation than the children of light. And I say to you, make unto you friends of the mammon of iniquity, that when you shall fail, they may receive you in everlasting dwellings. Thus are the words of today's holy God. Today, a few considerations on the scripture reading for today, taken from the book of Kings, where God speaks to Solomon and makes a promise. A promise that he makes to everyone who is baptized. Everyone that receives the holy faith of God comes to the true faith. He makes a promise. And he says, Solomon, if thou art faithful and dost fulfill all my decrees and live according to the peace, his name, according to the peace that was given him, as it says, St. Ambrose says in his commentary on Solomon, he says the word Solomon means the one who is the one who lives peacefully. Solomon had peace from the beginning of his days until the very end. And so as Solomon says, if you live according to my ways, then I will not depart from the temple forever. This temple that thou hast built, you have built this beautiful temple by my command, and by the movements of David prepared the battlefield, and thou hast built this beautiful temple. And I am very pleased with thy wisdom, pleased with thy life, and pleased with thy virtue. And if thy virtue and thy truth stay in thee, this temple shall remain forever. And I will never depart from it, and I will never depart from this people. Then he continues, But if thou turnest away from my ways, if thou turnest away from the, from the gospel, the, the, the gospel that I gave to you, then I will forget this temple, and it shall be laid waste. And the passers-by shall okay, so walk by the place where the temple was, and they will hiss and say, Behold, these are the ones who built the great temple. And they shall hiss and they shall mock. And this is said in many times in sacred scripture. It is said to Moses, said to Abraham, said to David, said to Solomon, and other places as well. What governs the history of the world? What governs the history of our families and the history of all things? It is very simple. Are we following the law of God and are we following his teaching or not? This temple will not be wasted. This temple will not lay waste. If you follow my ways, and the enemies shall come upon thee, and they shall not vanquish thee. So look at the history of the church in the last 500 years. It is a history of the church in retreat. And during this last 500 years, what has happened? Catholics of Catholic countries, Catholics of Catholic families, Catholics of Catholic parishes and dioceses throughout the world and religious orders have slowly retreated from the law of God. They have retreated from the teaching of God. 
They have retreated in their defense of God. And as they retreated in the defense of God, the enemies lay waste. Like, for instance, as regard to sacred scripture. They laid waste to sacred scripture where they said no longer is it the infallible inerrant word of God. So the Protestants stole that book, which is the word of God, and they twisted it and destroyed it. And it is used as the foundation of many lies and many heresies that has been taken from us because we have not defended and guarded it and we have not protected it. We've stepped away from that. And that actually started in the early 1800s. So for the first time, the church decided to no longer condemn as heresy what it condemned as heresy before. And the church stepped away. In the history of the Society of St. Pius X, it is exactly the same. This temple, no one shall lay waste to it, provided you follow my word, provided you live according to my commandments, and follow you, you keep humility and peace in your heart. And this has not been done. And so if it is taken from you, then I will bring the enemies upon you. This is said over and over and over again in sacred scripture. Moses, in his final word to the Jewish people, said exactly what will be their history. You follow God, you adore God, you follow the truth, and your enemies will not be able to destroy you. In the time of Christendom, in the time of the glory of the church, the enemies have always hated the church. But when Catholics stand for the holy truth, and live according to the gospel, they cannot be defeated. But now we're being defeated everywhere in the world. Now a new kingdom of Satan is taking over. And what is the cause of the trouble? That we have turned away from our temple. And Solomon also is a great example, because he's one of the great mysteries in history. We're reading about Solomon in the sacred scripture today, as Solomon was a man who was truly great, who was truly wise, who was truly a saint, and then he changed. And the same God that appeared to Solomon, today we read in the bravery, God appeared to Solomon, but he will appear to Solomon again. And the second time he appears to Solomon, he will not say any good things. The same Solomon, Solomon, I will reign in your children forever. Your kingdom shall not end. You shall, this temple shall not be destroyed. But then, how do we know the temple is going to be destroyed? Who knows the temple is going to be destroyed? Solomon knew before he died that the temple that he built as a young man would be destroyed. Solomon now is being warned by God. You built a beautiful temple, and you did it according to my wishes. You are, I am very pleased with you, Solomon. You are doing the work of God. But if in the end of your days you turn away from God, I will forget this temple that I have built, and I will destroy it myself. And the fathers tell us this is important to realize in regard to Catholic countries, Catholic societies, Catholic organizations, Catholic families, any Catholic thing that is good and pleasing to God. So to the monastery of Cluny in France, in 810 when it was founded, it was filled with saints. Filled with saints. But it turned against God at the time of St. Bernard in the 1100s and the 1200s. It turned away from God, and therefore was cursed and the saints themselves have special curses upon the monastery of Cluny. St. Bernard curses the monastery of Cluny. And yet it was a monastery filled with saints. Saints and saints and saints. And not only was a monastery filled with saints, but these are the saints that reformed the church. And Cluny collapsed. And you can visit Cluny this day. In this day when you visit Cluny, you will see fallen down buildings. You will see ashes. You will see broken churches and your broken structures that were never rebuilt. Because Cluny was cursed by God. And this is a warning to every reform movement in the Holy Roman Catholic Church, such as the Society of St. Pius X. God gave the warning to Solomon, and he gave it to Cluny. And he gave the warning to everyone. Now why is it that Cluny collapsed? Because it became extremely proud. And because it began to have confidence in itself and in its name. It began to rise either to stand upon its own name and its past exploits no longer stood by the wall of God, no longer stood by the, by the ways of God, and therefore it became cursed. St. Thomas Aquinas was told by the angels, do not join Cluny. St. Bernard cursed Cluny. And they were both inspired. The wise men said, you're going to be great monks. You need to go to Cluny. You need to be great monks. You need to go to Cluny. The times have not changed. We are now in the age where the glory of the last part of the 20th century and history will record it as such is the Society of St. Pius X. 
And when Archers of the Fail found him to the side as he advised him, Christ spoke to him in the same way that he spoke to Solomon. If you and your sons remain faithful, if you and your sons stand faithful, then they, this bulwark shall not fall. This bulwark shall not collapse. It is collapsing now. In fact, it has already collapsed. Archers of the Fab used to say very clearly, remembering these words of Solomon, which are in the breviary today, if I teach the faith, follow me. If I step away from the faith, abandon me. Repeating the words of the, I can never remember the name of the Frenchman, of the, of the Vendée, of the, the, the great leader of the Vendée, one of the great leaders of the Vendée, he said, if I charge, if I attack, follow me. If I die, avenge me. If I retreat, kill me. This is the way we go to battle. If I charge, follow me. If I die, avenge me. If I retreat, kill me. We are in this heavy a battle. This is the battle in which we are. But even though there are many glories and many victories, there comes a time when we, we make the mistake of standing upon our glories and standing upon our victories. Look at what I did. Look at what I did. No one can do the great work of Solomon. He is the great example in history, the great example of all of human history. This man was given the greatest wisdom of God, greater than St. Thomas Aquinas, greater than Aristotle. He was given the greatest wisdom of God, and he was given the glory of God, the blessing of God, and he had as his father the greatest heart that there ever was, the heart of David. And he was made to be the king, and he was pleasing to God. He truly was pleasing to God. But what happened? He stood upon his glory. He had confidence in his exploits and his great work. He began to believe in his own wisdom. And therefore, he turned away from God in his old age. And he went after strange women, and he built temples to other gods, the same Solomon. We must note here that there are many souls that believe that the temple of the Society of St. Pius X can never be destroyed because God said it will not be destroyed in a kind of way if it stands for the truth. And he said it of every temple, the temple of the Jesuits, the temple of the Franciscans, the temple of all the religious orders that he founded. But when these orders turn away from God, let them collapse. And our sister Lefebvre used to say that himself. If I, follow, if I teach the truth, uh, follow me. But if I turn away from it, abandon me. And he also used to say that if this work is the work of God, and we are truly doing the work of God, he will bless it, he will make it to grow. If it was not the work of God, let it die. Let it die. His work was only but the work of God, and we have forgotten this. Right now, for instance, just out of the road, they're building a St. Mary's Church. What is the purpose of this church? It is very clear. This $50 million church is built to the honor and glory of the SSPX. It is built to the honor and glory of all the great work we did in St. Mary's Canyon. And all the great work we did throughout the world. It is a reward to us after all the wonderful things we have done. There used to be a commercial about it in the 90s. You did something good today, you deserve a Mars bar. If you did something good, you deserve a Mars bar. I deserve a Mars bar. And it's, a, it's as valuable as a Mars bar. So we deserve a Mars bar. We, 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 built the, we, built, we fixed up the old church here in St. Mary's, Kansas. When we came here, there was one priest and one faithful. That's how many were in this parish in 1978. One priest by the Baldick and one faithful from Wisconsin. Wasn't even from here. And, that, and they have one priest and one faithful. Now they got 5,000 faithful. Now we've got compliments filled. And they can all, the, the women sing their version of notes on one side. The men sing their version of notes on the other side. And it's beautiful. We have to have three or four priests give a Holy Communion during daily Mass. We have succeeded. We are wonderful. And we deserve this church. And they have forgotten about God. And they have forgotten about His glory. Just as Solomon in his old age, I built that temple. And he forgot that God himself appeared to him. And God himself spoke to him. And God himself said, Solomon, I am very pleased with the temple that thou hast built. Who gave you the plans? I did. These are divine plans, not Solomon plans. Who allowed that all the pre most precious uh, or, uh, uh, items of the world came to your hands very easily? I brought them from India. I brought them from all over Asia. I brought them from over what is now called Europe today. I brought all these things to you. That you might build this wonderful temple. 
It is my temple. And Solomon forgot that it was his temple. There is a tradition of the Satanists, and a tradition that is most likely true. And that is that Solomon in his old age, who had built the temple above ground, which is the temple of God, the same Solomon dug tunnels under that temple. And he built altars to Satan. And the Satanists claim Solomon as the great wise man of Satan. They claim his wisdom as their wisdom. Because God gave the gift of wisdom to Solomon. He did not take it away. Just like God gave the gift of wisdom to Lucifer, and he did not take it away. But Lucifer took his wisdom, and he turned it from being a light to carry God just to the universe, to be a light to carry his own wickedness and his own visions to the universe. And as a tradition among Satanists, they claim that their father, the greatest teacher of all Satanism, is Solomon the Wise. And that he had built a temple underneath the ground. We will not know in the last judgment whether they speak the truth, but most likely they do. And God came to Solomon and said, You are cursed. I who blessed you in your young age and said, I will never depart from you. Remember what I said? I will never depart from you so long as you stand by the Holy Gospel, so long as you teach the Holy Truth, so long as you follow my Holy Word, so long as you are not filled with a great sin of pride, so long as you do not turn away from the things of God. Then I am with you. But if you turn away from my path, I will forget the temple. Remember, I told you this when you were young, Solomon. You remember the first part of the conversation, but do you remember the second? I told you many years ago, which is in the, in the reading today in sacred scripture, I told you many years ago that there will come a time, if you turn away from my commandments, this temple shall be destroyed, and all that walk by it shall hiss, and they shall mock. This is what happens if we turn away from God. And we cannot turn away from God. And how is it that we bring back the glory to the Jesuits? How do we bring back the glory to the Society of St. Pius X? How do we bring back the glory to every religious order founded by God for the purpose of preserving our holy faith and spreading it to the world? Go back to his teaching. Go back to his ways. And remember that our gifts, our faith, our perseverance, the gifts that we have received, are only a gift of God. And they do not come from ourselves. We are not able to stand upon our own glory and our own, our own exploits. I did this, and I did that, I did this, I did that. Oh, you did many wonderful things. That's really nice. Nobody really cares. Nobody really cares. What matters is, what am I doing this day for Christ? And am I still maintaining the law of Christ, teaching the ways of Christ? Am I still following Christ? This is what matters in our times, and in all times. And today we have the famous warning in sacred scripture that applies not only to Solomon, but to all those that have received the faith. Those that have received visions from heaven. Those that have converted from a terrible life of sin to a life of grace. Those that have turned away from heresy to truth. You have truth today, but will you have it tomorrow? You have, you have the grace today, but will you have it tomorrow? Work out thy salvation in fear and trembling. Follow the law of God. Follow his ways. And if we turn against those ways, there shall be a heavy punishment just as there was going to be a great blessing before, so there shall be a heavy punishment after. So we'll follow the, ask the grace to continue to follow the ways of Christ and not turn away from his holy teaching, not turn away from his holy practice. And we'll close that. God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.